Hi, I'm Russ Doty. And I'm Stephen Gallagher. Now, according to my notes, we're supposed to be talking about Linux systems management today, which is perhaps a little bit of a dry topic. So, Stephen, I had a thought. How about if we do a little bit of role playing today? I'll get my wizard hat. All right, it's just your size. I'm a mid-level systems administrator. I've been doing this for about three years. I'm doing uh, the day-to-day -day task for system administration. So basically, my job is to keep the machines up and running and deal with the 80% of things that you um, have to do, the, the routine stuff. My background is I uh, got experience with uh, Windows systems and VMware systems, but I'm a little bit new to this whole Linux thing. Aren't you also a bit old to be a mid-level engineer? Career change. I used to be a manufacturing engineer, but the job market is just not quite what it used to be. So I moved over to IT, and I have been learning a lot, and I have been having a great time with this. And uh, good picture, don't you think? Got your good side. Yes. So I'm a, an experienced Linux admin. I've been working for quite a few years. Uh, Primarily, I do my work with a big bag of scripts that I've established over the years, and since I don't actually have enough memory capacity to remember everything, I'm mostly powered by Google searches. And Stephen, I've heard you muttering, and I've actually paid attention to some of that, and you're a little bit frustrated because you get pulled into doing all of this routine stuff and you would really like to focus on the difficult things, the exceptional things, the fun things, things. fair enough, that really take uh, advantage of your background. So you would really like to have me doing a lot of the day-to-day -day things. That's correct. Yeah, now, I've been learning this Linux stuff and MKFS.XFS, uh, LVCreate, NMCLI, part ed, yum, system CTL, help! I, I, I just don't know where to start and what to do with all this stuff. All right, so let's try this uh, with the Socratic method. Let me Lead turn this around and ask you a question. If you were going to solve this problem, how would you go about it? What would be the mechanism, the method you would follow? Oh, you're making things difficult for me. All right, the, the first thing that I would probably want to do is automate it. I mentioned that my background is in manufacturing and engineering, so automation, I immediately think of factories and what we had to do in the factories to take these individual tools, these islands of automation, and glue them together. So in the factory, when we were trying to automate the entire factory, not just individual processes. Robots were the big thing. So what we needed to do was develop and provide a infrastructure and foundation for automating and integrating the tasks. That's a good start. So tell me, what do you think such a foundation would look like? Oh, you're going to make me do all the work here. So you want me to come up from thin air with a Foundation for Automating Linux Management. I think you have it in you. Fair enough. Okay, what would that look like? Well, the first thing is, instead of throwing away everything and reinventing the wheel from scratch, there are a lot of very powerful capabilities in Linux today, and I think I'd like to continue using those. I, I, there's a lot of capability, a lot of power, it's mature, it's robust, it works. So instead of throwing everything away, I'd be inclined to build on top of it. It's a good and idea, there's a lot of history there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the tools are powerful, they're just challenging to learn. Each one of these tools has a different interface, different commands, different orders, obscure syntax. So I think the thing that would really help would be to have a abstraction API that provides a common way of talking to these different tools so that uh, if I learned this common way of talking to the tools, I could pick up the individual tools much more easily. Let's 
it was like a reasonable start. And the other thing is uh, we're, we're dealing with servers here. And the server, I don't think I've seen a machine that I'm actually working on in the last six months. I would they're hope all, they're all in Arizona. Good point. Yeah, they're all off in that server. They're in the Arizona data center? Uh, except for the ones that are in uh, you know, California. Yeah, so that sort of thing. So with servers, everything is remote. So we're going to need some sort of remote communications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're absolutely right because with the uh, individual tools, they're all local tools. So you have to SH in and do everything locally. So an abstraction API and uh, remote communications would do a big chunk of this. Okay, I think we're making some progress here. So now that you have a remote API, I would say you probably need to figure out how to write a client to talk to it. That seems to make a lot of sense, and let, let me guess, you're going to know what should be in the client. Okay, well, the first thing, since we're dealing with uh, Linux systems, it's going to have to have a command line interface. Absolutely, I wouldn't feel comfortable if it didn't. And if it's got a command line interface, it's pretty well got a scripting interface. Uh, you're you're kind of old school about this stuff, so you would probably want this to uh, work from the standard Linux command line and from uh, Bash scripts. Yeah, I'd like to be able to. I'd like to be able to talk to it with uh, Bash scripting. I'd like to be able to talk with uh, to it with uh, perhaps a little bit of Python scripting as well. Now that makes a lot of sense. I, I've been working with uh, the Bash scripts, and there's a lot of capability there, but it's a fairly crude infrastructure and it seems to be missing a lot of the nice capabilities of a higher level scripting language. And some of the Bash scripts I've seen are a bit um, ugly and perhaps a bit fragile and uh, somewhat brittle. You may be generous in those statements. I try to be diplomatic. So the thing here is that uh, we really need to have uh, the CLI and the traditional uh, bash environment, but having a higher level uh, environment uh, integrated in it so that we can use some modern programming methodologies and approaches and have a uh, rich, robust environment for this. So yeah, Python is uh, being used for a lot of the uh, management interfaces anyway. I've been learning it, so uh, that would be pretty good. But I've noticed that not everyone is passionately in love with Python, so as long as we're dreaming here, maybe we should say that the system should support other languages. Uh, there's a lot of Java out there, and Java is used in a lot of business process automation, so uh, <clears throat> Java support would be a good thing. And, you know, if we build this thing, and built it properly, and people were actually using it, there would be some system level tools people that would want to work with it, and that would probably be using C and C++. Not just system level tools, but also perhaps a management console. Good point, good point. So, what do you think? I think that looks like a pretty complete view of what we would need to accomplish here. You know, the more I think about it, I'm getting excited. We can build this. We have the tools, we have the technology, we know some good engineers. We can build this. Hold up. This is the part where I get to tell you, we don't have to. 